All right, so in this lesson, um, we are going to be studying one-point linear perspective. Uh, this happens to be one of my most popular lessons uh, when we work on this uh, with the third, fourth, and fifth graders. And everyone always comes back to me and has a ton of questions about it. It is kind of a complex lesson. It's got some uh, pretty complicated vocabulary in it that I tend to use. Um, so while it is everyone's favorite, sometimes it can be the uh, most difficult na to navigate through. So hopefully this video will be able to help you if you're trying to draw at home, if you're trying to uh, use your, your one-point linear perspective packet that I've given you for class, um, or you just want to go back and check it out again. So one-point linear perspective. Um, I've included the fifth grade visual art standards, but I do teach this to third, fourth, and fifth grade. They all love the unit. So um, one-point linear perspective is a way of representing three-dimensional objects and space on a flat surface uh, by means of intersecting lines that are drawn vertically and horizontally and that radiate from one point on the page. So what does that mean? That means you're drawing things that look like they're there, 3D, popping out on the page, um, even though uh, you're working on a flat surface and it's not actually 3D. You can um, fool the eye and create the illusion that things are. So what are the vocabulary terms that we're going to be talking about? Vanishing point, horizon line, vertical, and horizontal. So the vanishing point is a point in a drawing where the lines come together. Okay, this is where everything will disappear off into the horizon, um, almost like um, when the when the sun sets and you can you have that one little point when you're looking out off into the uh, horizon where the sun just kind of disappears and and flashes before it sets. So that's what the vanishing point is. It's where our vision would disappear off into the horizon and vanish, everything appears to, to go away. The horizon line, you've heard me say that a few times, the horizon line is the place where the sky meets the earth. So if you're lucky enough to live on the ocean like I do, um, you can see in the one picture where the sky seems to meet the ocean back there, and it's where everything uh, disappears off into the horizon and the sky and the earth meets. I included a picture of a city and a sky as well, so that if you are not lucky enough to live on the ocean, uh, but you still live in a beautiful uh, city, you can kind of see where the sky would meet the uh, buildings there in the background. All right. What is vertical? Vertical is uh, something at a right angle to the horizon. What does that mean? It means it goes up and down. It's a line that would go up and down, straight up and down. Um, so when we talk about vertical, you will be drawing a line that goes uh, from top to bottom um, or bottom to top. Horizontal. Um, the line where the earth or sea seems to meet the sky is what a horizon is, right? The horizon line. So that's the best way to remember horizontal is that it goes the same direction as the horizon from left to right. So now it's your turn. We're going to try to do a one-point linear perspective drawing. So if you've got your paper in front of you, um, it should be blank. You should have your ruler with you. Uh, you should have your pencil with you. Um, if you're one of my students, you probably have your packet with you. Um, so let's, let's give it a try. Let's see if we can talk our way through one-point linear perspective. So on your blank piece of paper, you're going to choose a vanishing point. It's that one little dot somewhere just above the middle of the paper where you want your, your universe that you're going to draw to disappear off into the horizon. Um, you're going to put that dot on there and then take your ruler and draw a horizontal line across your paper through that vanishing point. So that horizontal line is going to be straight across uh, your paper uh, on the horizon line from left to right and it should go through your vanishing point that you've created. So when you draw lines that come from your vanishing point it makes uh, everything give, uh, look 3D. That's what gives it the illusion that things are 3D. So you're going to start by trying to draw a wall here. Um, so to draw this wall, you're going to start from your vanishing point and you're going to draw a line um, up off of the vanishing point and down from the vanishing point uh, until you get uh, a, a decent gap there. Um, and then you can see once you have these lines, 
then you're going to come back in and you're going to uh, draw vertical lines with your ruler that's straight up and down from the top to the bottom vertical you're going to draw some vertical lines in between the lines that you brought off of your vanishing point and you're going to create a wall it almost looks like a wall there and don't worry that if you can see your horizon line through it don't worry we can go back later and erase that and uh and, and make it disappear or decorate over the top of it with paint whatever we want to do however you're um you're putting this on um, so you should have a wall now and after you have your wall we are going to um, talk about making the buildings wide at this point so if you've drawn your wall off of your vanishing point as we can see here um, next you have to make your building wide so you're going to draw a horizontal line that's a line that goes along with the horizon line at the top of your wall from the corner off into the right or off into the left here depending on uh, which side of your paper you're working on and that makes your building wide as you can see here in the red circles that gives some um, some width to your buildings uh, and uh, as you can see if you come you've come off the top of your horizon line up here you would come across um, if you've gone off the uh, bottom you can still do so it looks great I, I love it when we when we put a little depth and in, into our buildings um, it's kind of fun for students to see a space start to appear on the paper at this point so um, you may want to add a few more buildings in take this time to uh, experiment a little throw some more walls in um, you can uh, create alley alleyways as you can see here by um, just jumping down a little and starting a new building and then uh, coming back and putting a horizontal line in here that's all that is is an extra horizontal line and uh, it creates like a street coming through here and we have the uh, slideshow of this uh, attached as well. So you can always bring up the slideshow, stop on this slide, take a good look at it, and uh, hopefully use it uh, to help you with your paper. Okay, so now we're going to make some windows and doors. Windows and doors are made exactly the same way as your walls. You are going to make lines that come off of the vanishing point and they're going to be the bottoms and tops of your windows and then you come back in with your ruler and you draw your vertical lines and your vertical lines are going to be the sides of your doors and your windows and to get the middle here of these windows it would be another line off of the vanishing point everything that comes off the vanishing point is going to create the tops middles and bottoms and then um, everything that is vertical to your horizon line is going to form the sides the walls the sides of the doors, sides of the windows and such okay now you've probably got some buildings or hopefully you've got some buildings and some windows on your uh, paper or in your packet if you're one of my students. Um, so now you've come to the point, uh, if you're one of my students, where you need to add a logo onto a sign somewhere in your assignment. And if you're just following along because you'd like to draw a one point linear perspective, that's awesome. Um, challenge yourself by throwing a sign in there. And uh, it, it, this is where it gets really kind of fun uh, to start making it look more detailed. Um, so for my students, um, I told you that I wanted you to put a logo of your favorite brand in there. Now anybody can do this, obviously. Everyone has their own favorite brands. And uh, I've provided some examples here. Some people like Nike, Louis Vuitton, if you're a little more fancy. Um, I'm an Apple fan. Um, some are Windows fans. So um, you're going to try and find uh, one that's going to be easy to draw. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't throw anything too complicated in, but you know what? If you're up for the challenge, go for it. Um, it's all part of uh, making that detail fun. Okay, so when you when you draw your favorite logo in there, do your best to keep it at one point linear perspective. Obviously, it's going to be really difficult to keep it perfect. Um, I, it's not even perfect in the pictures you can see here, and that's okay. It's not about being perfect. It's about having fun, and it's about uh, figuring things out. 
Um, the big secret is every artist makes a mistake. They won't all tell you that, but every piece they do, even the Mona Lisa has mistakes. So don't give up, just keep playing with it and it'll make it fun. Okay, so at this point, I want you to add some detail to your picture, doorknobs, right? That's always fun and those are fairly easy to put in. And maybe some awnings, you see we have some awnings above the doors here. Um, maybe some benches, I've, I've shown um, a detail on the side here on how to draw some 3D furniture if you wanna get really um, complicated with your furniture because some people will ask me, well, yeah, I want to draw a chair or something really cool, not just a bench. And so, all right. So uh, it's the same principle as doing the buildings. You're going to um, have the tops and bottoms and middle of things come off the horizon line. And then you're going to have the sides um, are going to be vertical lines that come straight up. So, um, and you can see the horizontal lines to form the tops and the bottoms. So you can have some fun with some furniture as well. I've left this uh, up on here. And uh, again, it's in the slides uh, that are attached down below if you want to attempt doing some furniture or attempt a, a drawing of an inside of a building or something like that. Okay. So once you've added some detail, maybe some bay windows um, and uh, it sidewalks, details, uh, lines in the streets, you will um, continue on to the next step, which is going to be making your name. So um, if you're one of my students, this is the part of your assignment where uh, you're going to be uh, taking your name and making like a personal logo for your desk. Now, this can be used if you are um, uh, making a name or a celebration poster, like a happy birthday poster, Merry Christmas card, anything like that. It's kind of fun. Uh, my students uh, tend to end up using this on everything all year, writing notes. So uh, this is a, a fun lesson here. So it's the same thing, one point linear perspective. You're going to find um, your one point to uh, uh, base everything off of. Just like uh, before, you're going to have a, a horizon line and a vanishing point. And once you have your horizon line and your vanishing point, then you get to start playing around with your letters. And of course, for my students, it's going to be the uh, letters in your name. Um, you are going to be doing the tops and bottoms of your letters with the horizontal lines. Remember, horizontal goes along with horizon. The sides of your letters here are going to be with your vertical lines up and down. And then here you can see the middles, the things that uh, give it a little depth are going to be off of your um, vanishing point. So give that a try with a few letters. Um, I've included a few styles here. We have just uh, straight across going down off of the vanishing point. We have coming up off of the vanishing point. Um, we have both. Um, you can see this one has got both uh, first and last name. We've got some that wrap around. As you can see, even curved letters are possible as long as you're using the vanishing point, right? It's kind of fun. And uh, you can throw some shapes in there too. This person threw some shapes, some hearts, some stars, some circles. This is all about experimenting with these shapes, having some fun. And again, don't worry about getting it perfect. I like that this person used some shading here to make it look like it was falling down through deeper, right, from light to dark. That's really awesome to try as well. So um, again, you're going to choose your vanishing point where you want your letters to come off of. Then you're going to uh, have your horizon line. And again, don't worry about there being um, anything here if you want your block letters uh, not to disappear off into the horizon. You can erase the lines back here later. Um, but it, uh, it, at the beginning, it's going to look a little more like this. Some people like to leave it like this. Um, so you will find a point where you want to um, put the back of your letter that will make, uh, make your letter, uh, give it a little depth, like it's going back into the horizon. 
Okay, and um, now you're going to um, be doing this with all of your letters, giving it a try. B's are kind of fun because you have the middle here and you've got to draw some lines out from the middle as you can see. And uh, you're still going to use vertical lines for the sides of the opening. And you're going to use uh, horizontal lines for the top. Right, but when you're creating the depth, you're going to be using that vanishing point. So I want you to find a way to make your name catchy once you've got it drawn. And uh, if you're one of my students, you uh, have got all your letters on there. Uh, you know I told you I want some color into it, so go ahead and uh, choose what colors you want to put into it. If you want to do a light to dark kind of theme, or if you uh, want to throw a few colors in there, that's all right. I just want you to make it fun, make it bright. This is going on your desk, so I really want that to look cool. And uh, again, you can add any shapes you would like. Um, some people, uh, this, this is really kind of fun. This isn't a specific shape. They just uh, um, made it a little organic looking form here and uh, played with it. And I like that. So I thought I'd throw that in there just for fun, just for you to see. So what have we learned in this lesson? We've learned how to draw one point linear perspective landscape. You're just using the uh, vanishing point and the horizon line. All right, remember the vanishing point is that little point in the back where everything seems to disappear to. The horizon line is that line where the uh, sky meets the earth, right? How to make uh, the landscape detailed by adding some windows, doors, signs, uh, and other little details, right? What companies or jobs may use uh, the perspective um, uh, drawing skills, right? If you are... Um, creating advertising for those companies, you're going to need to be able to do uh, think about how things are going to look in perspective on pictures or in models, right? Um, how to create your own logo with your name, right? We learned how to do that, my students, for your desk, your personal name logo for everyone else out there. You just learned a really cool way to do your name and shapes. Um, and if you were in my class, um, we also discussed the importance of uh, logos and the art behind them and uh, what makes a powerful company logo. Um, if you are just uh, watching this video and you're not one of my students, then that part may seem a little out of place to you, but um, we'll just tell you too. The logo that a company uses is um, an instant way of you recognizing their brand. You see the golden arches, you think McDonald's. So. Um, art in advertising and um, thinking about how things are going to look from a distance at a perspective, maybe from a different perspective. Um, you, you have to think simplicity. You have to think power of the image. So um, thank you so much for watching our video. I hope this helps with your packets if you're at home working on them for my students. And I hope you have a great afternoon.